Hey YouTube, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Let's switch gears a little bit in this video and let's look at Fusion from a fabrication perspective. If you're used to other CAD programs, if you come from another CAD program, say such as Inventor, uh, you're used to using something called a frame generator. And with Frame Generator and Inventor, we can easily create frames in MITRE and COPE and do things like that. Uh, Fusion isn't at its point in its life where it has those tools yet, but that doesn't mean that there aren't existing tools that we can use to make that job fairly easy. So I thought I would go through a couple examples of how you can make some COPEs inside of Fusion. And we'll use some a couple simple examples to explain the difference between the two. And then we'll look at uh, drawing up more of a frame design. So the first method I want to talk about is the split body method. We're going to use a body to split another body. Uh, let's take a look at the bodies folder and we'll notice that there's a body one and a body two. Body one, body two. So we have our two bodies on screen. From the modify menu, I want to go and choose to split a body. Fusion wants to know what body do I want to split. I want to put the cope in this part, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It wants to know what my splitting tool is going to be. I'm going to select my splitting tool, and in this case, I want it to be the outside surface of uh, the second body here, or the body one, I guess, in this case. I'm going to click on that. You can see I get a color coordination showing me which is the which is what, and I click OK, and we don't really see anything happen other than we add a third body onto the screen. So if I shut off the first body, you'll notice that uh, we have the original body is broken into two bodies now. If I shut off the one body, you'll see that we can see the cope. And if I turn on the other body, you'll see that we get a perfect notch around that part. A couple things I don't like about uh, this particular example is that if this is going to be welded, if we can keep a, a constant material thickness or close to constant, we're gonna get better weld uh, adhesion. And here you can see that we're kind of getting, you know, a different amount of wall thickness there. It's aesthetically not quite as nice either, um, just a little bit crappier to deal with. So let's go take a look at a different way we can do the same thing. I'll turn this back on. Let's go over the split face method. So I'm gonna go to the modify menu and choose to split a face. In this case, I'm gonna split this inside face of this tube and the splitting tool is gonna be the same outside or that same body that we selected in the, in the last example. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, if we look at the bodies folder here, we still only have two bodies. If I shut off body one, you'll notice that it doesn't really look like anything's even changed on the second body. But if we look on the inside, you'll notice that uh, that surface is broken into two halves. And that allows me to do something called the push pull command. So I'm going to right click and choose press pull. And I'm going to choose this inside surface. Now, when I created these tubes, I made a 0.095 wall thickness, so I'm just gonna go negative 0 0.095 and click OK, hit cancel, sorry. Press pull, minus 0 0.095, I'm gonna click OK. And there you can see we have a nice uh, notch on there. And if I turn on body one, note no longer do we have the extra material, the kind of pointy material, we have a pretty consistent wall thickness as well. Uh, if you've ever done anything on a tube cutting laser, the the center of the laser is always pointed at the axis of the tool. So if we look at this straight on. The center of the laser would be coming straight down, you know, pointed at the center rotation. So if we were going to cut uh, this part, the laser wouldn't rotate. The part would rotate around to the laser, and this edge would be completely uh, compliant for a fourth axis laser. So another uh, bonus for doing things this method. I'm gonna turn that body back on and there you can see what we have. If I do an interference inspection, um, I'm gonna go and choose interference and click on body one and click on body two and tell it to calculate. You'll see that we have no interferences. And if I come back to this method, we can do the same thing. Inspect, interference, body one, body two, tell it to calculate. Again, no interferences were found. So there's a couple different ways you can go about making uh, copes. Let's take a look at a different frame design. We'll do it from scratch, making the, uh, the tubes and everything. So here you can see I have a fairly simple sketch. Let's edit the sketch and take a look at it. I made it 36 inches long, 14 inches on center, uh, made these two ends be eight inches on center, and then added a 60, 60 degree angle call out. 
So let's go ahead and stop the sketch. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding pipes to this. So from the create menu, I'm gonna to choose to do a pipe and I'm gonna click on this bottom line right there. And I want the section size to be two and I'm gonna again go with a, a thickness for the wall thickness of 0 0.095. Now, once I click okay, you see my sketch goes away. I don't have to go back and redraw that again or anything. I can just go to my sketches folder and turn the light bulb on so I can keep reusing that sketch. So let's do another pipe of command. So I'm gonna do a pipe, I'm gonna choose this top line. And again, I'm gonna do two inches and 0.095 for the wall. Click okay. Now we'll put our little support pieces in and we're gonna go a little smaller with those. So we're gonna choose create and pipe. I'm gonna grab that line. Notice the first thing Fusion thinks is that because this body is intersecting the other bodies that it wants to do a cut. We don't want to do a cut. So I'm going to make this an inch and a half in diameter. And again, the same 0 0.095 wall. And an important choice that we're going to make here is instead of cut, we're going to say we want to make a new body. So we'll go ahead and choose OK. And one more body to create. So we'll say pipe one more time. Click on this section size of 1.5 wall thickness 0 0.095 and we're again going to choose to create a new body so if we expand out and look at our bodies folder you'll see that each one of these uh, tubes on the screen is its own body if we do an in inspection of this as a section analysis let's turn on the origin plane for a second so we can use that to cut this in half you'll see that when we look at this straight on that Clearly these pipes are interfering with each other and that's just not gonna work out for what we need to do. So let's go ahead and hit cancel. We don't wanna accept that. And we'll turn our origin visibility back on, off. And uh, now we don't need to see our sketch anymore either. We're kinda of done with that for now. We'll come back to that in a minute. But let's turn that off. So what I wanna do is I wanna start splitting these faces on this part. Uh, from the modify menu, I'm gonna to choose to split a face. Try that again, fusion's being a little difficult. Split face, that's the face that I wanna split and the splitting tools are going to be these two splitting tools. Actually, we can do those both in one shot. So modify, split face, I wanna split these two faces and I want to use this and this as my splitting tool. We'll get a little more efficient with our workflow here. Go ahead and click okay. So now if I turn off body one and body two, you'll see that we have um, our cope there. I'm gonna right click and choose press pull grab on my surfaces that I want to uh, get rid of. And I'm gonna again type in negative what the wall thickness is, so negative 0 0.095. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. So if we turn this back on, it looks like we're doing pretty well, but let's go ahead and do a little inspection here. So from the inspect menu, I'm gonna choose interference again, and I'm gonna click on the things I wanna participate, and I'm gonna uh, tell it to calculate. And you'll notice that we have four interferences. Um, so that's not going to be good for what we're trying to do. A fairly easy workaround to uh, go and take care of that though. You can kind of see it. What we would see, a little difficult to see, is that uh, the inside lips on this are, are what's interfering. Kind of that inside edge. So what we can do again is we can repeat that process one more time. I'm going to turn these two bodies off just to make it a little bit easier for now. And I'm going to say modify and I'm going to split a face. And this time I'm going to split the inside faces of these two tubes. Go grab that face and that face. I'm going to turn these back on. And the splitting tools are going to be this and this. And I'll click OK. And again, we'll turn off body one and body two. Now you can see we have uh, the additional edge on the inside. So we'll right click and do our press pull again. Select the edges that we want to get rid of. Grab these different faces, one more to go. And again, I'll type in my negative 0 0.095. We'll click OK. And now when we turn those two bodies on, we would have something that would be interference free. We could cut these two uh, support angles on a fourth axis laser. Uh, so we don't have to sit there with either a grinder or a hole saw or whatever trying to do this. So pretty simple and effective way uh, to create frame members. Now, once we do do this, we'd like to be able to document these different things. So what we could do is 
right click on these different components here, these different bodies I should say, and create components from them. So I'm gonna right click on body one, and I want to choose the create components from bodies. And I'm gonna rename this uh, bottom tube. And let's do the right click on this one, create a component. Let's call this top tube. Let's create a component from that body and call this uh, left support. And one more, let's right click on this one, create another component and we'll call this right support. And be careful when you get to this point because what I can do now is click on these tubes and move them around anywhere I want to, which uh, is probably not desirable. So if you need to, um, we can just come and ground these. I'm just gonna highlight all of them. I believe I can ground them all in one shot and choose ground. Now they're all grounded, uh, but they won't move around anymore. They're, they're stuck in place. So what happens if you wanna go back and make design changes? That actually works out pretty well. Let's go edit our original sketch. Let's change our angle here to 50 degrees. We'll make this distance be four inches. And let's change this to be 15 inches on center. So we made some changes. We'll go ahead and stop the sketch. And what we'll notice is that everything in our, our frame updates automatically. So if we can put a little design intent into this and draw this out, we can turn our sketch back off now that we've done that. You can see you have a frame that's pretty editable, uh, follows along with the modifications you do, and is pretty simple. We can now, we could uh, create drawings of each one of these components, build material, we could give these material properties so we could find out exactly how much this is going to weigh, things like that. So we don't have a frame generator in Fusion yet, but don't let that deter you. There's ways that you can get around it and they actually work out pretty well. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you li like the video, go ahead and give it a like and uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.